Shall we begin? Hey, everyone. Welcome back to the More Than Just Keto podcast. I am one of your hosts, Molly. Hello, friends. And I am your other host, Ashley. Social media. Let's start here. Mm -hmm. It is an amazing tool that we have to get inspiration. We've talked about this a million times, how how important it has become specifically the community that we're currently in. And Mm. I know a lot of health and fitness communities have the same kind of, um, small tight knit groups, but also larger groups and just the, the, the vibe with getting healthy and and living your best life. It seems like there's a lot of support in these groups. Right. And while there is a ton of support and it is such an amazing tool, there are ugly sides to social media. There are truths and lies and lives that people have created and lives that are truly being lived. And while it is an amazing tool, it is also something that we have to realize that we can't assume that we just know everything. Right. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, And there's a lot of people that have a problem with that kind of stuff. Like some people think they call it, um, and, and I'll be honest, I'm one of the people I am really big on being real. Okay. Yeah. Same here. But I don't think being real means that you have to tell everyone everything about your life. That is not what social media is about. It's not there for you to tell every single thing, right? And just because you don't tell everything doesn't mean you're fake. It doesn't mean it's not real. I think that we have to remember where everyone is coming from. So like some people come there to bear their soul and you get Mm -hmm. to know them as a person who bears their soul. Yeah. And some people are only going to show you what they're comfortable showing. And maybe that changes later on, or maybe that develops over time. And some people are there for completely other reasons to run a business. They never meant to show you who they are. They've never meant to bear their soul. It just isn't their propaganda for their page. For you and I, we pretty much share almost everything. Maybe not every intimate detail because something should be private in, in my personal opinion. I agree. I agree. But 90% of the time we show what's actually happening and what's really going on, how we're really feeling and Mm -hmm. portraying the actual journey. We're not talking about, oh, we're, we don't mention things when we mess up, you know, and I say that, you know, we're, we're really big on that, but some people want to get on and they want to spread light and love only, right? Some people want to get on because maybe their life is extremely dark in other ways. And this is a safe haven for them or safe space for them. Yeah. And you can't assume anything. That's really what this is about is Mm -hmm. this, this episode is about curating a journey that is for you. Right. And Mm -hmm. using social media as a tool, but not just comparison because you don't know everything right. Right. That you see is real or not. Yeah. And and that's important. Mm -hmm. And so, and I, I, I'll be my, I'll put my hand up and say, I used to be that person that thought that everything that I was seeing was real. And this was years ago. And I would think, wow, she has everything. She has it all together. Everything's so perfectly beautiful. And I would present it that way, right? Because that's how she presented it, because that's how she chose to present it for whatever reason. I'm not here to judge her for doing it that way, but that is what she did. And I'm speaking of actually two or three um, from years, I'm talking years ago. Nobody now, nobody that I see now. To be honest with you, I honestly, if I try to think of anyone who only shows the beautiful side on Instagram in our community, I cannot think of one person. And we'll get to that point later. Okay. Because that's a. (laughs) Because that's a choice. And it is a choice. And if somebody does that, that's fine. But I right. can't, I'm sitting here thinking, I'm talking, these girls are like, you know, the, they they're all have something. that certain filter and mm-hmm. they're selling something and they're selling something. They're selling and it's, something. And it's their lifestyle, right? So, it's their lifestyle. Yes, and that's, what they're right. trying to sell. So right. that's what they do. Um, and it works and it because works. <laughs> it worked because yeah. I thought. I can have that. I want that. And I got to a point, I'm not going to lie to you this, and I've shared this. So I might as well just say it. It was when I was in Beachbody. So I got to a point where I was just tired of seeing it. And I left, you know, I had already left whatever, but I quit following all these people because it wasn't making me feel good. I wasn't proud of myself for feeling jealous or coveting what they had. And 
I would think, why can't I have that? And it sounds so pathetic sort of, but I don't want to say that because there's probably other people that feel that way. Um, I think it's natural. It's a human thing. Sometimes you can feel that way until you realize, yeah, for sure. right. Until you realize we, I think for me, it just totally changes the topic, but for me, it became a point where I had to work through that time. I separated myself from social media and I turned to being grateful. I turned to meditation. I turned to doing it because it really was taking that big of a toll on me. And that is embarrassing to admit, but you know me, I'm real. Yeah. No, <laughs> I'm going to tell you the good, bad yeah. and ugly. That's, that's in our, um, our description, the good, in our bad description, and the ugly. Yeah, that is. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I did sadly, I'm ashamed to say I had such an issue. I had to step away from social media and get it together. And you know what? I started realizing all that I had. And I was like, I have this, I have this. And I started thinking, you know, and, and really appreciating. And when you find, when you're grateful for what you have, that coveting and that comparison and that, you know, wanting what someone else has goes away. It really does go away. So I guess we, my point to say all that is there's probably plenty of people that are where I was. And so they might assume that people are faking, that they're not being real because they're showing a certain thing or they're not giving everything. But like you and I talked about just because they're not showing everything doesn't mean they're fake. And I think that's important. I think, I do think that's important. And I think that it's okay to find the people and follow the people that you're inspired by Mm -hmm. and use them as inspiration. It's, it's very easy to get trapped into the comparison. They call it a trap for a reason, right? (laughs) And it is because it's very easy to covet someone else's life, to covet what they have, to want Mm -hmm. what they have. Mm -hmm. We've all been there, right? We've all been there at some point where you're scrolling through and I've been there and I'll give an example. I'm scrolling through. I was extremely heavy and I'm just drooling over these transformation photos. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, just like, wow. I did that too. I mean, I wish that was me. I Mm want to be that. How did she do it? Right. Mm -hmm. And so, so we know this happens and there's one thing to be inspired by somebody's story and their journey. And there's another thing to like, want to have someone else's success, right? We've talked about this so yeah. many times, right? That that's that person's success and it's not yours. It doesn't belong to you. Mm-hmm. You have to go find mm-hmm. yours, right? Let that motivate you, not consume you. That's the difference, right? Yeah, that's good. And a, a big thing, and this is to your point earlier, when you said, you know, on my page, when I'm there, I don't see those mm-hmm. things. And that's important because you choose what you consume. That is right. on. And so you're not seeing it because you're physically seeking what makes you happy. Yeah. And so you have to remember that social media is going to give you exactly what you're looking for. Yeah. And this is important. If you're looking to be angry and to be agitated by what you're seeing and consuming, it's much like the news, right? You're going to find it yes, and it's yes. going to follow you and it's going to show up at the top of your screen and all those bubbles to watch. And yeah. every time you watch and indulge in them, it's going to be there the next day. And then there's going to be more suggestions for you to See consume more. that type wow, of true. emotion. Yeah. So it's important that you choose your space. Mm-hmm. It's important that you carve out your own path and you share your own journey. And it's important that you're careful who you let in, who you're watching. You decide, you know, for me, social media is a safe space. I come there as my, it's kind of like my diary. Mm -hmm. I share my family journal. Mm -hmm. I share my personal things. I share my mental health a lot. I've shared a lot more of it in this last year than I ever have. Yeah. Bear my soul several times there. And I've always been met with such amazing support and feelings of community and, um, in a time where I felt really alone, I knew I wasn't alone. Yeah. That is such a gift, but it doesn't always go that way. So you have to be a smart consumer when it comes to social media. And it's funny, but you have to, you have to curate your space just like you do in your real life. You don't let people treat you a certain way and you don't expose yourself to things you don't like. Right. And I think sometimes we let outside influence dictate what we're seeing and what we're consuming and what we're getting involved with, even on social media. 
there was a time when I had zero filter, like zero. Poor Pete, my husband, poor husband. (laughs) I would say whatever came to my mind, I would share everything. Like I had always, and I was this way for like my whole life. I didn't have um, a secret. My life was, I used to say, my life is an open book. Open yeah. it up. I will tell you all about it. I just, you know, that's just how I was. But I'll be honest, looking back now, as I say that, there were certain things I didn't tell because I didn't want to be judged or whatever. You know why we do that? Why? Because we think that if we tell everyone everything, that they're not going to find out what we're hiding because we look so open that there couldn't possibly be anything. We're hiding. Oh, I, you know, you're right. Cause you know, who's like that. <laughs> we throw, we give you everything, everything. So, so we, we are don't... so honest. What would we hide? You know what I ate for breakfast. I told you when I <laughs> chewed a top of a pin, what? I'm hiding nothing. I'm so honest. Yeah. I'm honest. I'm honest. I'm honest. I'm honest. I'm real. I'm real. I'm real. I'm presenting this to you. Yeah. Because you want someone to believe it because you want to believe it, but you're, you have things that you're not sharing. Oh yeah. That oh, definitely. Is, that is why we do that. I learned that. Well, that's a good, that's interesting psychology. That's, that's like, psychology. I learned that it is psychology. Yeah. It is a, it's a form of barrier protection. Wow. All right. It, I is, a, believe that. it is a force field that we create around us to make it look different. It is a deflection of something. Either we're withholding we're scared people are going to judge us when they find out who we really are. Yeah. And so we're just going to tell them up front what it is and you deal with it. Cause this is how I am. I will just say, I, and I'm not like toot my own horn or anything, but I have to say, I broke all that off a few years ago when I created boundaries and I stopped being yeah. a people pleaser. Well, so I know I think, you don't do it, but I just think, no, but I did. That. It's like, that makes but, sense, but you working through that. But what you're sense. saying, it's like, wow, I didn't realize that. Cause I didn't go see a psychiatrist to tell me, yeah. <laughs> you just told me why I did that. That makes total sense because I had so many secrets that now I have bared my soul to my husband. I've told him everything because I had to tell somebody the the many secrets from my life that kept me feeling shame and kept me feeling, you know, for what, you know, whatever doing what it is that you just said I was doing that I didn't realize I was doing. So now I'm I'm totally free because now everything has been given to the person I trust, because here's the thing. And they protected it. The support, once you decide you're ready to let go of the information, lets you take down the barrier, which is okay. the oversharing of information is a protection as a way of you being able to say, well, I told you everything. Like I'm not hiding things or, you know, you know, I would just tell you, or it's a form of self-care in a way, self-preservation that comes from trauma. It is literally marked trauma response. Wow. It's how we deal with situations when we're not sure if we're safe. And I know that sounds so crazy, but <laughs> no, when we don't know we're safe, we make these choices to protect ourselves. No, I and think what, it doesn't sound crazy what you're saying, yeah. because it actually makes so much sense because I never yeah. really felt safe until with a person, right? Seriously, and that's that never is until fight or flight my husband mode kicks in. And, that's and I had a lot of trauma. And yeah. so I was that, hiding that a lot sense. of things because I didn't want people to know. And those things, even though we think we're hiding them, they still take a toll on us on the inside. We don't, and we pretend that they don't, we don't, oh wait, there's a part of us that can't feel it. We, we just can't because we have to stay sort of numb in that area Yeah. because then the showing of all this won't withhold. Yeah. Yeah. So in order to put everything on the table, the table has to be there. And if you are feeling all the things you can't have the table. So there's a sort of like, I know, but I can't, I can't, Yeah. but like, look, I'll just do all of this, <laughs> yes. but like, look at all this. Let's just but make everybody laugh and let's just right. all have so fun. It's a way and, yeah. to compartmentalize your, um, do you have a degree in psychology, you know? Ashley? Because I quite no, but think that I you am, should have been a psychologist. I, the way that you're obsessed with Enneagrams, which is a form of oh, psychology. Yeah. <laughs> it is. It's, it's a study of people yeah. and it yeah. is categorizing people is the same fuel that I have to understand the brain and why people make decisions and what, what we do. I know that I did that. I had to work through that. Mm -hmm. And I'm still like, Oh, I'm this kind of person. And it is, it comes from wanting to seem confident, even when I'm not. So I'm, I've typically come off as more arrogant or funny or what sarcastic, because I don't want people to question 
my authenticity. And they can't do that when I'm acting that way. And it's just a form of protecting yourself, you know? Wow. And when you trust people, yeah, that guard totally comes. different thing. Yeah. And it's totally different. But it I always really say is. it's like a first date. You always show up as the person that you want to be, but that doesn't mean that that's not who you are, but that is your protection self showing yeah. up for you, you know, looking out for you. This is, a, this has a lot to do with social media because oh, we, yeah, I agree. we think is safe and we think if we can trust our community, then we can be vulnerable. Yes. And if we can't, th- that's kind of how that feeds in. You no, know? I love that. I love how that connects to each other because it all makes sense. I feel like, as, like, as you say that I'm just thinking the person I trusted first was my husband now, not my first husband, but this husband. And I was able to tell him all my dirty little secrets, all of them, all right. everything, just the everything, truth everything, no matter what, no matter what, no matter what I told him. Did I knew deep down that he was going to still love me, but I felt like you were afraid I, of rejection even then still, right? I, I was because yeah. I was taking, I was taking a big risk and yeah. telling him everything, but I did it because I knew I needed to. And the freedom that I felt after that is like no other, I dare I say some anxieties that I had dissipated like, and since then, and this is where it ties into social media for me. Okay. Because I feel so safe in my environment, my everyday environment here, because I surround myself with people like you, like my husband, people that I trust and people that support and love you, support and love me. And I'm not fake or phony or pretend to be a certain way or make you like understand you even, right. Even, I mean, under like same person, different body, different hair color. I mean, but (laughs) it's like two brains split in one, one brain and two bodies. Yeah. So that is like bonus. But my point is like, because I have that and not everybody has that and not everyone has, has been able to be honest in their life and just right. spill it out because it right. is hard. It's hard. But when yeah. you do that, the freedom that you get, and I'm going to add that to say social media, I don't give a care. What because you have think people in your real life media. that support you and they know who you are. And so yes. you don't see. I don't need to, from that. I don't need to pretend to be somebody. If you like me, great. If you don't like me, great. But I wasn't this way several years ago. I was definitely not this way, yeah. but in the last, I would say four years, I have come a long way because I started creating boundaries. I started being honest and it's, you it sounds to terrible. Those boundaries, even on social media, there are certain things. Oh, yeah, you have to have boundaries people, yeah, because not everybody has earned the right. And this is what we're talking about is like trust is like, you know, not everyone has earned the right to see or hear certain things that I know I can absolutely trust. And I know people know me and I know that, you know, that they're not going to judge me and that it is truly a safe space. There are some people there that I trust with, with my life. That if I ever saw in person, I know if I needed help, they would help me. I would do the same. I would yeah. give the shirt off my back. Well, your social media somebody. relationships absolutely are, are, they are real. They're, they're real. Super real. And, so, and that's a, it's a, it's a good reason to connect for the right reasons Yeah, you know, because mm-hmm. you can create what you're looking for, which is the real relationships. If you bear as much as you're comfortable with, you are more likely to step away with real relationships yourself from compare, comparing yourself to others, instead of looking for others for support, which is, oh, yeah. which is what we want. Right? right. Instead of being jealous of what someone else is doing, have a community that supports you and what you're doing. Yeah. By you sharing that you give someone a way to support you. Yeah. Yeah. The more that you share, honestly, is it risky? Is it vulnerable? Absolutely. Yeah. Is it scary? hundred percent can be. Yeah. There were things that I never thought I'd share. There were pictures and poses and things in my body that I thought I'd never share. And here I am bearing it all. Literally. I'm about to post a picture in my hot tub for my trip, <laughs> like legit. And I'm just going to do it. And it's just, it is what it is. And my husband took it and it's, it's, it's wonderful. And it made me feel feelings that I want to share Yeah, that makes somebody else might feel. And instead of comparing myself to someone else's photo, like mine, mm-hmm. I'm just going to share mine, yours, my story, right? And hoping that somebody will do the same. Yeah. And that we all can own our journeys and share them 
to get inspiration from each other, not to envy or covet what someone else has. Yeah. Because I'm not you and you're not me, yeah. but together we can, we can be on the same journey and do it different ways. We can right. support each other and not even do this the same way. Right. And we see that we see that in our community, the more people share, the more we learn that we are, like you said, we're on the same journey, but we're doing it differently. And when we can appreciate what the other person does rather than, um, criticize or, um, compare what they're doing or saying, whether it's right or wrong, it may not be right for you, but it's right for them. And instead of being, um, you know, ugly about it or negative about it, instead realizing and respecting the, the idea that that's right for them, not for you. That's where oh, that's the, what the makes authenticity the and yeah. the true uh, connection could happen. That's where the, that's where the, the peace in the community, like you and I have peace in our community. You have no beef yeah. with anyone. Do you, do you have any beef with anyone? Cause there I don't have people that have beef behind my back, but I don't have any, like, I, I don't have, have any actual beef that I me neither. know of. I don't, I don't have, uh, side conversations about people. I don't have right. anything going on in my comments or in my, uh, have other people outside of our community attacked me. Of course, have people commented on photos that have been taken and been ugly. Of course, they're not people that I, that's not your community. That's just that's haters. They call them, right? So that's yeah. So that yes. But as far as issues with anyone in my community, I personally have never had that. Me neither. And is it because you're fake? No, I feel like no. I share <laughs> everything that I can to help and not to help just to share. Right. Too. And it's also going to come back down to balance as well, right. because sometimes you can be I think sometimes you can overdo it on social media. You can have all these expectations and be everybody's friend and everybody needs you. And then you can't like, there's gotta be a balance there. But I think that if you, like you said, curating your space, um, that's super important. I don't have beef. I've never had beef with, I've been in this community since March of 2019. I have not had beef with not one person, not one, nobody. Yeah. Nobody. I've never had any issues. And you know what? I feel like, like you, my space is pretty curated to like my daily interactions with people that are just super amazing. They've been amazing Mm -hmm. to me. That's, that's all I can base it on. I don't know what people do behind closed doors. We never know. We we have to like, just take people. You will never know. No. And and, and you have to know that you will never know. And you don't need to zooming and talking all day and having a podcast. No, I'm just kidding. Um, But my point is that you really don't ever truly know someone, even when, and we were talking about this at work the other day, even if you go through someone's phone, you still don't know who they are Yeah, because you're only getting to see certain parts, but everybody has a part that they don't show. So Mm -hmm. some of us are going to show more of those parts that are maybe a little bit more vulnerable or maybe Mm -hmm. a little bit more uncomfortable to share, Right. but not everyone's going to do that. And that's okay. And that's because okay. They're that's... able to cu- curate their space. And over time, that person may grow and, and expose them, you know, themselves more when they're ready, they share more when they're ready. Mm-hmm. So I think it's really important though, to make sure that like, you know, you're paying attention to what you're consuming. You're paying attention to what you're seeking. You know, is it positivity? Is it just factual realness? Is it, you know, is it a little bit of both? And that's kind of like, I love somebody who's bright and sunny and mm, I love somebody who tells the truth and is not and me so, too. Well, I'm struggling. I mean, yeah. things are not great. I can respect that. And I want to support those people. And that's the other thing. Tell me what's going on. I want to support you. I want to be here to, to talk to you in the DMS and offer support because when our that's what it's all is better, about. we are better. Yeah. And anytime we can help each other means that not only our community grows, but our relationships grow and that's where healing happens. Yes. You know, when, when yes. we connect with other people and bear some of our truths, we're able to work through some things that maybe we haven't worked through. Yeah. Cause you I can relate with, about the community, right? You can relate with someone and you can, I always find, or the, the thing that I've always desired to do is to give hope to people who have lost hope. Like that's been yeah. something inside of me since like the late two thousands, it's just been there, especially women. I say people, women, for me, it was women. Yeah. And I think, and here's the thing. I get that back because I look at other people and I gain hope. And I think that 
is a beautiful thing because well, you, you get what you put out in the world right back to you, right? The energy that you put, the energy that you put out in the world is the energy that you're going to receive. I, we're both huge believers of that, right? Totally. If you, like I said, we keep saying, if you curate your space, if you make your social media, whatever you want it to be, right. And then you put that out there, you're going to gain more of it. That's true. I'm, and I'm really honest and I'm, and I'm also positive. Like I've had a lot of traumatic things happen to me and I've had to go through a lot of healing and a lot of hurt and a lot of, and now more of that and medications and all these things. And by sharing and getting to connect with other people, I've not only helped myself, but having those conversations in DM has helped me talk about it, work yeah. through my trauma. Yeah. And also I'm helping someone else right? who, who maybe was like, dang, I didn't think of it that way. So yeah, I just absolutely think, perspectives. You know, yeah. And, and instead of comparing yourself to someone else's journey, finding friendships and finding community is more of the direction that we want to go. Because here's the thing. At the end of the day, it's your social media. It's your account. It's whatever you make it. And that's how it's supposed to be. And that's yeah. something I had to, I had to get there with that because I actually, um, I'll get comments or DMS that say different things and I'll, I'll respond and say, Oh, that you think that was okay. Cause sometimes I think, Oh gosh, maybe I shouldn't share about that. Or maybe, uh, nobody wants to hear about that. And I've had others, I won't say their names, but I just adore so many people in our community, but they'll say, girl, you share what you want to share. And yeah, I've always if somebody likes too. it, yeah. great. If they don't great. And I'm like, thank you. Do you know that helps me? That helps me so much. And they don't even realize how much that helps me because it makes they don't them realize think, that they're supporting you. They don't even realize that. that. Saying, right. Hey, but that's what they, your ideas matter. Your makes your a matter. difference. They make a difference for me and I appreciate it. So just think if that's happening, you've, you've expressed it. I've expressed it Yeah, that we both have had that. So how many other people have as well? So don't stop supporting each other. Don't stop rooting for each other. Don't, don't compare yourself. Don't covet what other people have. Just if, if you want a peaceful social media life, <laughs> choose it. This, this is our tips. Stop comparing, encourage, be vulnerable, share, and uh, lift each other up. And if you do that, you'll get it back. That's just, 100%. we're just proof that you that be is the case how much the community can make or break your journey, how much, how much accountability changes the shape of your journey, how much sharing helps heal you and others. Yeah. And the friendships that you make sometimes keep you rooted when you were otherwise, you would otherwise leave or give up on yourself. It's true. Because I know if some of these people go missing, I'm like, where are are you? Uh -uh. Uh-uh. Where are you? Well, listen to this. There are people that go missing and I'm like, I miss them. And then I think, but I'm not going to message them because sometimes people just need a break. I'm that person. It's like, I should just message them. So now tonight I'm thinking those three or four people that I've been missing seeing, I'm going to message them tonight. And I'm going to say, just want you to know, I miss you because I don't want anybody to feel pressure. Like they need to be there. (laughs) Is that so dumb? But that's what I do. I I overthink it. It's important to tell somebody I'm thinking of you. Yeah. I think Sometimes you go missing and you're like, yeah, it doesn't matter. And when you are sharing and when you're building relationships, the likelihood of you going off track, people are going to know, you know, I always joke yeah. that's, that that kind of anchors me back. It's like, I'm not going to get on a lot of these people. So I better right. I'm gonna keep my stuff in line. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I made promises yeah. or I, you know, I, I, you know, I spoke about this and I, oh, I'm the same way. And I, and I held myself accountable and I held them accountable. So we're in this together. We're in so, this together. Right. You know, sometimes <laughs> we, and we talk, we've talked about this a lot in, on the first season, but people underestimate social media yeah, and what it can do for you. And I think it's just so important to have a community, but you have to be a part in building that and you have yeah. to want it. Yeah. And that's what we're talking about today is that it is a community. It's not just smoke and mirrors. And yeah, if you are following people that are selling a lifestyle, yeah, well, it's that's... absolutely going to look that way. Right, right. And you're probably going to want to covet something that's not really maybe attainable. Right. Right. But if you're truly being authentic and you're actually seeking authentic connection, let me tell you that it is bountiful. Yeah. There's almost too much. Sometimes you can't even keep track of it all. You're right. Ashley, that's so good. Bountiful. I love that. I love that word. That's such a good word. 
It's true. I love that. Well, that's about it, girl. I think we've covered everything. And um, as usual, we are so grateful for y'all. We're grateful that you listen. We love you, community. We love you. Yeah, we love you, community. We love you, listeners. <laughs> bountiful. We love you. Yes. <laughs> and beautiful. And beautiful. <laughs> but we are going to wrap this up and we're going to see you on the next episode. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye. Thanks for joining us today. You can find and connect with us over on Instagram at more than just keto. Don't forget to subscribe so that you never miss out on the fun. We'll see you next time.